So I just finished replaying both The Last of Us Part 1 and Part 2. The first game, originally released more than 10 years ago for the PlayStation 3, has been remastered for the PlayStation 4 and now has been, as they call it, rebuilt from the ground up for PlayStation 5. Now, I'm not here to talk about the PS5 remake of The Last of Us Part 1, but I will say I thought it was really fantastic. It looked visually on point and really in line with how strong the second game looks too. As soon as I finished Part 1, I just immediately had to hop back into the world of Part 2. I just needed to see this entire story through, and I gotta say, there is so much power in playing Part 1 and then immediately just going straight into Part 2. It is an incredible journey, but I'm not here to talk about that entire journey today. Instead, what I want to talk about is one particular place in The Last of Us Part 2, and that is the town of Jackson. The town of Jackson has to be one of the most incredibly detailed, photorealistic, and true-to-life towns I have ever seen animated into a video game. Now, this video does contain some mild spoilers, most of which take place within the first few hours of The Last of Us Part 2, and you could generally say this definitely has spoilers for how The Last of Us Part 1 ends. In this video, I just really want to focus on the specific design, attention to detail, love and care that went into the creation of the town of Jackson. This is an Ode to Jackson in The Last of Us Part 2. Let's start off with Ellie's house. So in part two, Ellie lives in a separate garage from a house, and you can really see how much of her personality has been put into this space. There's an incredible amount of references to part one. Joel's house also has a lot of references to part one. We will get there. But just looking around her room, it's so Ellie. First of all, she has a PlayStation 3, and of course she's going to have copies of games like Uncharted 2 and other Naughty Dog IP. We can see photos and drawings of Dina and Jesse, as well as her horse Shimmer, we can see her own personal store of foods and dried goods. Of course, we have a Savage Starlight poster, which was one of the comics that she collected in the first game. This I didn't catch in my run through, but she also has the toy that Sam had in part one. And no, Ellie's room would be complete without a bunch of space stuff. We can also see some trading cards on her table. This is something that's going to become a collectible throughout the entire game. And no, even though I've played this game a lot. I still have never found every single one of them. I even tried using a walkthrough this time, but I missed one in the middle of a chapter and I just couldn't force myself to go back and restart the whole chapter just for one trading card. So that is something I have not yet achieved. Just walking through the beginning of Jackson, Naughty Dog does such a great job of setting this up. It very slowly reveals the scale of everything to you. First you walk through the greenhouses, and you're immediately impressed by how many there are, by how there's different vegetation being grown and cared for in each one, how we see people shoveling, people digging in the dirt. You can approach many different groups of random NPCs in Jackson, and actually sit in and listen on their entire conversation. Think we should send a patrol? Nah, I think it's good to have bears around probably do as much to keep the infected in check as we do. So then you turn the corner and you actually get to see the full size of Jackson. You get to see all the individual people going about their lives, performing their work, talking to each other, having conversations, sharing coffee, inspecting things, chasing each other with snowballs, waving at people as they go. There's corkboards all over the city with individual signs for help wanted, advertising dances, advertising movies. You can pick up the first trading collectible card here. Now that I really think about it and you flip the card and you see that this trading card character is more of a villain, I kind of wonder if they were trying to allude to something here. One of the first interactions we're treated to is with Buckley, the dog who we saw in part one. And if you're asking, can you pet the dog? Hell yeah, you can pet the dog. Hey, Ellie. Yeah, get a good scratch. I would actually love to do an entire video series just called Can You Pet the Dog? Because for part one and part two, the answer is yes. Also, really cool Easter egg here. We see a man playing the banjo here, and that is actually a character model of Gustavo Santalaya, who is the composer of both part one and part two. Gustavo is also doing the score for the HBO adaptation. 
You can listen to this couple having a bit of a disagreement about their young child going out on patrols. Guards, you can't keep them cooped up in here forever. They have their whole life to see horrible things. Chances are they're not going to start at the lake. Well, I don't want to take a chance. Steven's kid still has nightmares from that infected attack. So what is the right age for taking them out? I'm not sure. I just know our kids aren't ready yet. Gently backing away from this awkward convo. Also, that child looks like he is freezing. You can watch all these kids kicking around snow, enjoying themselves, making snow angels. It's really adorable and it's so true to life. You can see them all taking turns, sliding down this mini hill. You can even see somebody watching them from a distance, keeping an eye on the children, making sure that they're okay. As you walk around the town, you can see all these different activations, different places like the butcher shop. You can actually walk in on a few NPCs having a convo about you. That's right, they were talking shit about you and Dina kissing there. Oh, hi. Oh, hey, Ellie. Morning. This is probably one of the most detailed moments walking around Jackson where you can watch this man teaching a child some butchering techniques and it actually goes on for several minutes. If you stick around long enough, you can actually start to hear them talk and him describing the way that it needs to be done. Separate these organs from the membranes. See that membrane here? Yeah. You wanna try? No, not yet. You finish it. <laughs> okay, watch me. You can watch folks shearing sheep and animal skins. You can listen to the townsfolk of Jackson having difficult conversations about what their life is like. A few days. I can't ask people to go out of their way like that. Are you gonna fix your roof by yourself? That'd be ridiculous. I just feel guilty. Ever since we lost Sydney, everyone wants to help all the time. You can stand here and watch blacksmiths do all their complicated work. You can listen in on a conversation about a trade that didn't quite go nicely. I'll call it an IOU for now, but next week I want to see a fair trade on this table, all right? Of course. Thank you, Don. Go on now, I'm working. The pub that we visit in Jackson is so lively and charming. You know, this is really the first time in the Last of Us franchise where we get to see what casual living is like for some folks. This guy looks like he's seen a lot. We have a grocery store where you can actually go up to the windows and see all of the bread and all of the produce that they offer. There is a movie poster for a film called Housebreaking Rufus, which was advertised on the corkboards. Also because of the release date here, we can assume that this is one of the last films that was out in theaters when Outbreak Day happened. We can watch this man walking with his child, which is absolutely an adorable moment for a game that's totally about stabbing people in the neck and shooting their limbs off. It's very cute though. There's these gentle, quiet, understated moments like watching a teacher work with young children. And moments like these aren't even built into the story, they're just optional to see for your viewing. And again with the attention to detail, guess which section is the children's books here? Can you see it? I also want to give some praise to this snowball fight scene because the first time that I played the game I didn't think too much of it. But when I play it now, I realize this is actually a really great way to tutorialize you in the combat and the cover system. It shows you how to grab objects, how to throw them at people, how to hide, how to get away from combat, how to involve yourself in combat. It's actually really smart in a kind of dark way. In your face! Eat snow! No! See you! See you! Jackson has a fair amount of livestock, including some beautifully animated cows. Now, if the question is, can you pet the cow? The answer is no. Tragic. Inside the stables, we can see a man cleaning his horse's hooves. Now, as somebody who used to actually ride horses, I am very familiar with the process, and they did a very great job of detailing it, and that horse is behaving so well. Look at all these different saddles. You don't even get to change your saddle in the game, yet they really went through the effort of animating all these different types. You can view all of the assignments that are on the board and who is assigned to what section. You can even read the personal rules that Jackson has for keeping yourself safe. There is a discarded bin of names, which makes you wonder if these people are either taking a break or have possibly even passed. And finally, of course, for everybody on their assignments, there is breakfast snacks and light refreshments. 
You do really gotta hand it to Naughty Dog for thinking of the big and the small things. Settle down, Joel. And as a last stop, we go through Joel's house after his passing. Now, I have to say, this is one of the strongest moments in the first act of the game. The way that Ellie felt having to go into his house was the way that I felt, trepidatious and heartbroken. The first time I played this game, I must have spent legitimately 20, maybe 30 minutes just slowly going through his house, looking at his things, thinking of the person that he was in his private life, the habits that he picked up, the hobbies. Beautiful details like a sketch that Ellie has drawn of him, photos with his family and friends, that photo with his daughter. Thoughtful additions like his own little drink station, his love of coffee, his impressive guitar collection, or his woodworking station where you can actually see an unfinished piece and something about that really made me sad. I mean, even look at all the different kinds of types of wood that he has for his station. That is just a really applaudable level of detail. It's so Naughty Dog. One of the more somber moments too is seeing how Joel was trying to learn more about space because it's such a heavy interest of Ellie's. Going through Joel's house is a bittersweet experience and it's one of the last things that you do in Jackson. Say what you will about the rest of the game, but you cannot deny that Naughty Dog has really hit the nail on the head with how it opens up the game and depicts Jackson, depicts Ellie's room, depicts Joel's house, and depicts the community that she's a part of, the community that she eventually decides to leave. It's a bittersweet game overall, but I really truly appreciate what Naughty Dog has put together in the opening of this game, and it's one of the strongest I will always remember.